Uh, greetings, Real Filmers. I have the co-author of the uh, one-man show in Iliad, the one and only Dennis O'Hare. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Good, good. Uh, well, first off, uh, happy belated New Year. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, I understand that you have an uh, Irish passport, so did you spend um, the holidays in Ireland, or did you stay here in the States? I stayed here. I do have an Irish passport. Uh, I, Irish citizen through my grandfather. Irish do that. And uh, I have relatives there, and uh, I see them occasionally. I haven't been for a couple of years. Okay. Um, so I was, I was upstate New York, actually, with my uh, 20-month-old son and my husband and with Lisa Peterson and her girlfriend and with two other friends of ours, and we watched bad movies and played cards. <laughs> nice, nice. I didn't drink too much. I didn't drink, so. <laughs> All right, so uh, on to the Iliad. Um, I understand that, I mean, I know that you co-wrote it with uh, Lisa uh, Peterson, um, and I know that it was quite a journey to kind of get it together and to, you know, uh, put that adaptation together. So can you go into a little detail about some of the challenges, the big challenges that you had? Because I understand that you guys have, like, you have contrasting views on the subject of war, and you guys yeah. kind of, like, merged them together. So. Well, it's interesting. The first big uh, issue to grapple with is how big the piece is. It's a massive book, and um, to, to, to reduce it to 90 minutes is really difficult. And there are so many great characters and so many great adventures. Our big task was to try to edit it down where we felt like we weren't robbing it of its beauty and vitality. Um, and Lisa and I, I would say, are, are close to the same views about war. Um, I would say I'm a little more um, passionate about my anti-war stance and she's not pro-war, but her point of view was that human nature is violent and that human beings have a violence in them and perhaps that is inborn and will never go away. And so our two views, my view is that war is a waste. It wastes time, money, and flesh. And her view is that, but human nature is violent. So those two ideas come together and that's sort of uh, embodied in Hector and Achilles. And the irony, of course, is that I should like Hector and she should like Achilles, but I love Achilles and she does Hector. So we're kind of like, we cross. Okay, all right. Uh, well, with that being said, um, the show's been playing, you know, uh, for, for a while. Have you noticed uh, versus the East Coast and, you know, it playing over on the West Coast, have you noticed kind of any, have you noticed any trends in terms of the reaction based on, you know, regionally where, where, you've, where, where the show is played? Uh, n not... Yes. Um, I, you know, some audiences are more vocal than others. Okay. Um, audiences in the West Coast were very vocal, and so people would actually talk back to the, the performers sometimes, which okay. we love. Um, in New York, it happened a little bit. Um, Chicago's a little more buttoned down. They tend not to do that here. And people didn't talk back at all. Uh, I found the audiences here quieter than a lot. Uh, the New York audiences want to laugh sometimes more. They want to sort of, like, engage. Feel a little lighter, yeah. You know, we're, on, we're on your side. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that, however, that Washington, New York, L.A., I'm not L.A., but or Berkeley, are, are all sort of in the same cultural milieu. You know, we read the same magazines, we maybe have the same, we vote the same way, possibly. So it would be really interesting to see this done in, like, Alabama, or in Idaho, or in uh, Arizona, or in, you know, Mississippi or in Florida, that would be really interesting for us. That would be a very different audience, and I'd love to see how they would react. All right. So I'm going to go on a random tangent here. I, you know what's coming. I have to ask you, I love True Blood. I have to ask you, um, you know, your character, uh, uh, Russell Edgington, one of my favorite characters. Thank uh, you. He did, you know, bite the bullet, so to speak. Yeah. He did, you know, yeah. uh, his, his uh, tenure did end. Yeah. Um, but as we well know with True Blood, the death, death isn't always the end for a character. So, um, you know, are, are there any plans perhaps to bring him back as a, you know, I guess as a, uh, as a figure or kind of like a ghost for his progeny? Because I know Steve is still, you know, Steve is still a... Uh, um, you know, a lot and kicking. I mean, it's not his right. progeny, but right. you know, um, right. or possibly as a as a flashback sometime in the past. Because I mean, right. he's what nearly three thousand years old. It's funny because uh, the guy who plays Steve, Mike McMillian, and I talked about having a, um, a like a web series where we we go back into time and and uh, and show the further adventures of 
of Russell and Steve. <laughs> um, but um, I, I'm unfortunately, dead is dead. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, th th they may come back to me and ask me to do flashbacks and things, but as of now, there's no plans on that. Um, mostly because there's so many storylines in True Blood. Yeah, sure. And without, unless I'm connected to the storyline, like a plot point, like we have to go back and revisit Eric's revenge, there'd be no reason to bring me back. Um, they wouldn't do it just to bring back Russell. And I have to say, I'm happy him going out that way. I think Leave Well Enough Alone. It's a fantastic character. I don't want folks to ever get tired of him. And if he comes back, he has to come back in a great way. Okay. I don't want to come back just for a little cameo. Okay. In which case, I'll be busy. <laughs> well, if, if they did ask you to come back, you would be, definitely be open to it. I love them, absolutely. Okay. I love them. No, I believe they're, they're great people. They're actually friends of mine, and I miss, I miss them terribly. And uh, They're my family. They're my, my vampire family. <laughs> All right, well, while we're on the topic of future projects, I, I understand that you're also a part of another film that's been getting a lot of buzz, particularly due to the physical transformations that a lot of the actors are going through with Matthew McConaughey and Jerry uh, uh, Leto, Jerry Leto yeah. Yeah, um, in um, Dallas Buyers Club. Right. So can you talk a little bit about your character in that film and what it's been like to, to do that film? Um, I play a doctor. I play the do doctor who's running the uh, AZT trials, which is the, what Matthew McConaughey gets involved with and Jerry Lee does involved with. And Jennifer Garner plays my colleague. And in the movie, I'm sort of the, not the bad guy, but I represent the conventional thinking. And Matthew and Jennifer represent unconventional thinking. And so we definitely clash. And uh, I had a fantastic scene with Matthew where he literally threw me up against a wall it kind of wasn't in the script that way. In the script, it was kind of, he comes in and confronts you, and next thing I know, Matthew McConaughey is throwing me up against the wall. And, you know, he's lost a lot of weight, and he's not as powerful as he once was, but he still threw me up against the wall pretty hard. <laughs> and uh, we did that about six times, and I was like, all right. Um, but uh, it, was, it was a great thing to work on. And, you know, I, the character as written was great, and what I kept advocating to the director and the writer was, I want this guy to be more than just a tool you know he's got to be he's got a passion he's got a point of view and so I kept advocating for the fact that I was right many of the things that the movie vindicates in history proved to be right for my character even though in the movie I'm not correct so I fought for I fought for reason and logic okay all right so there you have it real filmers um I have Dennis Dennis O'Hare here uh be sure to catch an Elliot here at the studio theater um it's been extended to uh January 20th so don't miss it <laughs>